I think that, frankly, rubidium is kind of a disappointment. And here is why. You know from my previous videos that as you go down on the, per down the periodic table on the column of the alkali metals, the metals get more reactive. So because rubidium is really far down on the periodic table and in the column of the alkali metals, you think that if you threw it into water, there you'd get a huge reaction. The problem with this is that it's wrong, and here's why it's wrong. Although the electronegativities go down, and therefore the reactivities are higher, and therefore if you did throw it into water, it could generate more heat per atom. The reaction between the alkali metal and the water isn't what generates the explosion. What generates the explosion is the burning of the hydrogen that that reaction creates. And you may be surprised to learn that lithium, the highest alkali metal on the periodic table, actually creates more hydrogen per gram than any of the other alkali metals. And the reason for this is that lithium is the lightest alkali metal. It's got the smallest, lightest nucleus. And what this means is that in a given sample of a gram, in a, in a sample of a gram of lithium, there are going to be more lithium atoms than in a gram sample of sodium. There are going to be fewer sodium atoms in a gram sample of sodium than in lithium, in a gram sample of lithium. So although the reaction between lithium and water is less intense, per gram it produces more hydrogen because it's, it's a stoichiometric reaction. One atom of lithium plus one molecule of water is one molecule of um, lithium hydroxide and one atom of hydrogen. So if you have more atoms, you are going to get more hydrogen. So the, the thing is, you would think under this way of thinking that actually lithium would be the most intense reaction and sodium would be less intense and potassium would be less intense than that and so on. But there's one more step. And the thing about that is that although lithium does produce more hydrogen than all the other alkali metals, the, as you go down on the periodic table, the, the reaction temperature does go up. And if it doesn't matter how much hydrogen you produce, as long as you're below the flash point of hydrogen, the hydrogen is not going to burn. It's just going to be created. It's not going to burn, and you're not going to get an explosion. So lithium makes a ton of hydrogen but it, the reaction isn't hot enough to burn the hydrogen, so you don't, it, that's, that's a fizzle. Lith uh, sodium makes still a pretty good amount of hydrogen, because it's just a little bit heavier, but it's, but, it, but it's hot enough to actually ignite the hydrogen. So sodium actually is the ideal metal if you want an explosion, because it's still really cheap. It's actually cheaper than lithium in large quantities still produces a lot of hydrogen and it's just over the flat and the, the reaction of it with water is just over the flash point of hydrogen. Potassium is still pretty good but it's much more expensive and it doesn't produce as much hydrogen. The one advantage of potassium is that it actually um, makes a really beautiful lilac flame because little bits of, of the potassium are actually radiating their emission spectrum so that's much more beautiful than the sodium flame. That's one thing that's good about throwing potassium into water. Now you're probably already convinced that throwing rubidium to water actually wouldn't be so amazing because it wouldn't produce that much hydrogen. But there's another thing that I want to say that'll make you even more convinced, which is that actually, even though rubidium is the most reactive, that actually can be sometimes bad. Because for sodium, it's not so reactive and it'll build up a tarnish layer. So when, when it hits the water, it'll actually go into the water a little bit. It's lighter than water, but just the force of it hitting the water is enough to bring it under the water's surface a little bit and you'll get a huge explosion. Now, if, if you have a big enough piece. Now, with rubidium, it's so reactive that the minute it touches the water, that'll react and that'll propel the piece of rubidium up out of the water and like out of the bowl or something. So that's not very good. So, all in all, I decided not to get rubidium and not to throw it into water. And, the, and I would anyway, even though I knew it, was gonna, it would be um, a total flop, 
except for the fact that rubidium, if you buy just a gram of it, would cost me about $150. So I didn't want to buy that. I would like to thank Theodore Gray for indirectly providing me with a lot of the information I had in this video about how alkaline metals behave in the real world when thrown into water. Um, I provided a link uh, in the video description to his website where he has a uh, has videos of him throwing all of the different alkali metals except for francium of course into water um, and you can actually see for yourself uh, the difference between sodium and lithium and uh, potassium and rubidium and he, he has videos of, of a very scientific comparison he has five gram samples thrown into water under very similar conditions and it's a very gets very interesting results so thank you Theodore Gray it should be said that although of nonmaligned rubidium, rubidium is still quite an interesting element. The second is now defined as a certain number of oscillations of electrons jumping between two very specific energy levels in a specific isotope of cesium when excited by a specific wavelength of electromagnetic radiation. Although the time standard is now defined by cesium, um, and cesium clocks really are the ultimate kind of clock, Rubidium clocks are actually much cheaper and smaller and end up being the, kind, the, the clock of choice when actually measuring very precise amounts of time. So rubidium is actually still quite useful, although this is kind of a little bit more in the physics realm. Rubidium vapor is also very useful for a host of different physics experiments. Uh, rubidium atoms many times have been the atoms of choice when cooling things down to very close to absolute zero, which is a very fascinating field of um, experimentation and study. Um, Bose-Einstein condensates can slow down light to the speed of a bicycle. That's pretty amazing.